be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. To all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph too went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and the family of David. He enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in a swaddling cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now, there were shepherds in the region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all people. But today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ the Lord, and this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in the manger. And suddenly, there was a multitude of the heavenly hosts with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the high, and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. On behalf of myself, Father Sunday, Merry Christmas. It's great that every year we're reminded to recall and reflect on the greatest gift this world has ever received and that would be our infant king, Jesus. And sad to say, our world doesn't seem to recognize him. I'm reading a very interesting book right now. Someone, a friend of mine, gave it to me about the new apostolic mission that we have, and kind of broke down society in two two aspects, Uh, an apostolic time, and then what he called Christendom. You see, for the first 379 years, Christianity was not the state religion. After 313, it was legal to be a Christian. But after 379, Theodosius said, hey, you know, we're going to uh, make Christianity a sponsored religion. So it was actually receiving the support of the empire. The scriptures tell us that Christ came at the fullness of time. Paul mentions this in Galatians. What does that mean? It's hard to know, but I have my own theory about this. Christ came when the Roman emperor had control of about 60% of the civilized world. And that empire had a system of roads, communication, language, and law that kept the empire humming along for some 700 years. It was founded 752 years before the birth of Christ. And what's interesting about this is 300 years later, that emperor became a Christian and used the full force of the empire to take the Christian message to every corner of the world with united language, communication, and law. No other time in human history could the gospel have been spread in such a way. And so those first 300 years were those apostolic times because they 
It really didn't have the support of the government. Yeah, there were some good things in Roman society. They had virtues and different things. And, you know, if we practice good habits, those are the virtues, we become, we become virtuous people. Well, bad habits are simply vices. And if we practice the vices, then we come, become filled with vice and we become vicious. Think about that. Do we, want to be, do we want to have friends who are virtuous or do we want vicious friends? Christ makes us virtuous. If we accept his invitation, it changes our life. And it's not just some cleverly concocted myth. This is a reality. You know, as I was sitting in my chair over there, and as, as I was pondering on this cold night with an inch of snow, kind of nice out there, really. Actually, the roads aren't too bad, I don't think. Not much snow, but it certainly made things beautiful. It reminded me of an old story that I heard on Paul Harvey, you know, the rest of the story. Remember those wonderful little snippets? Now, I might be embellishing this story just a bit, but it was a story about a woman and her husband. And the woman had passionate faith. She loved Jesus, and she loved the church. And it was midnight mass, and she was going out. It was a snowy evening, only a lot more snow than this. And it was a ritual where we'd say, you know, honey, will you come to Mass with me and the kids? And every year he said, I'd love to, but it just doesn't make sense to me. I just can't really believe it. Just doesn't, doesn't make sense to me. The man was a good man. He was sincere. And so as his wife bundles up the kids and takes off in the car, and as he sees the taillights disappear into the snow that's falling, a little bird comes flying towards him. He's looking at the window, it's like hits the window, and he looks at the bird, lands, and he's looking right at him. And he's thinking, man, it's really cold out there. There's no food for that bird. I should give him some food so he doesn't freeze to death. So he bundles himself up, takes some food outside, and he says, you know, if I could get that little bird to go into the barn, he'll be fine. He can get into some hay, he won't freeze to death. So he tries to lead the bird with some breadcrumbs and lead it into the barn. And sure enough, the, the bird will get close, but when it comes time to get into the door, it just won't go. So finally, he says, well, if I put a little food right in front of the door, maybe I can sneak up behind it, I can just scare him into the barn. So he does that, and he dives at the bird as it's eating the food. The bird takes off flying right for the door and then pulls up and lands on the light outside the door. As the man is laying there, feeling the cold snow melting down his neck, he's thinking, man, that dumb bird. All I'm trying to do is help this stupid little bird find safety. He said, if I could become a bird just for a moment, I could show him the way. And then in the distance, he heard the church bells. And he said, oh, Jesus became one of us to show us the way. And he shows the way to all who listen, all who accept his gift. He doesn't impose himself on anyone. But if we pour over the scriptures, we see those prophecies fulfilled. We see a message of love and compassion and goodwill. Many people were critical of the Messiah, and they said, hey, when the Messiah comes, there'll be peace on earth and goodwill towards all. Look around, that's not the case. And what they failed to grasp is when a person knows Christ, they not only die to themselves, but they have a peace in their heart that no one can touch. And they also have goodwill towards everyone, even those who hate them, even those who cheat and steal and lie. Christians still love those people. It was Leo the Great, I believe, who said, you know you're beginning to understand Christianity when someone wrongs you, and you're more concerned about how they're damaging their own soul than any harm they cause you. Because when we put our faith and trust in Jesus, we're free. And fear is cast out. This pandemic has been so hard on everybody, but particularly the elderly in isolation, and particularly on the young people who have no, no roots, who oftentimes don't really necessarily know what to believe in. It's been hard. 
But the path out of the pandemic, hopefully, is we will be there to pick up the pieces. We need to be prudent. I think it's a good idea to wear masks, take precautions, do what we can to help protect our brothers and sisters. Because there is fear. There's great fear. I do thank God that we're in Indiana, <laughs> that we can gather and celebrate our liturgical services, that we have a government that sees these as essential services. What a blessing that is, because many parts of this country do not have that benefit. And so it's great that we can gather to pray for our world, to pray for a miracle, to pray for an end to this wretched pandemic. Now, yeah, we need to follow all the good things, and hopefully the vaccines will be helpful, and we'll reach herd immunity. But let's just not wait. Let's just ask God to intervene and cure everybody right now. Wouldn't that be great? He could do it. Will he? I don't know. But let us rely on God. Because this is the beauty of our faith. If we have faith, it doesn't take away our human fears. Nobody wants to get sick. But we know that if we do get sick, somehow it's God's will. And we go forth. And we're not paralyzed by fear. That's the difference between a Christian. We know that God has it. And that our life is destined for eternity. Jesus is clear. He says the path to salvation is narrow. It's not an easy path. And the way to perdition is wide. Let us pray that we will put our faith and trust in Jesus. And yes, take advantage of the medical insights and all the things that God has revealed to people and these breakthroughs. I'm not trying to diminish the importance of those things. Those are great things. They're gifts from God, from God as well. But let us put our faith and trust in the infant king. He has this. And he will give us joy. Let us pray that God will help us be instrumental in helping the world know how much they are loved by God. And I hope all of you know how much you are loved by God. Each and every one of you, and anyone who's watching on the internet, you are an infinitely valuable, one-of-a-kind masterpiece created by God for a mission. And that mission is simply to share the good news of Jesus Christ and help everyone you know know that they are loved by God too and that God has a plan for them as well to proclaim the good news that we have a Savior who brings peace and goodness and truth and beauty to all who seek him. Let us pray that 2021 will draw us all closer to God, that our faith will cast out fear, that we may trust more profoundly in the only God who can save. Jesus Christ, today we celebrate the infant king. Let us understand this mystery in deep and profound ways. Let us pour ourselves into the scriptures this year. Let us study the Bible. Let us study the teachings of the church. Let us do what we might to deepen our own faith. The more we encounter Christ, the deeper our joy will be. I think it was also Leo the Great who said, Christians have this juxtaposition of joy and sorrow. Joy because we're counted among the elect. Sorrow because many are not. <laughs> and they seem to close themselves off to the good news. But let our life of joy and peace and love and compassion be something to draw them in to this great mystery. So that they too can be united in the only, to, to Christ, the only God who can save. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us stand and profess our faith in the only God who can save. And just a reminder, there's only two days in the church year when we genuflect, when we're mentioning the Incarnation. It's on Christmas, and it's nine months prior to Christmas, the Annunciation. So we genuflect when we celebrate the conception of Jesus and his birth. So in those two lines, I'll kind of slow down and pause, but we'll all genuflect. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, 
consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we bring our prayers of intercession before the Lord. For the church, that she may always proclaim the gospel and serve her infant king, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all nations throughout the world, they may strive to serve the common good and not be motivated by greed and self-interest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this year's celebration of Christmas deepen our faith and more profoundly understand the gift of our infant king. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Florence and Arthur Bella, the intention of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end, an end to the pandemic and peace on the streets and growing solidarity as a human race, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our personal intentions found in our holy book and all those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all corruption and sin would be uncovered both in the church and outside the church, and those responsible or it lose their power or be converted so that we may lead a true vision of life, religious liberty, and all that is in accord with natural law. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For more vocations to the priesthood, religious life, the dedicated single life, and for holy matrimony as a vibrant witness of God's love for his people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our first responders, volunteer professionals, police officers, and military personnel, that they may be given the strength to keep our society healthy and safe. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of the people gathered here before you, those spoken and those kept in the silence of our hearts. Answer them insofar as they meet our deepest needs and are in accord with your holy and divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Oh uh-huh. 